with me. I have John with Shodan.io. John is one of the speakers here at the National Cyber Summit, and he's here to tell you guys, the viewers who don't know what Shodan is, what it is, what you can do, how you can search, and things of interest. So John? Hi, Nick. I'm here uh, to talk about IoT at National Cyber Summit. I'm very excited to reach a different crowd than I normally speak at. And yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of happening recently on IoT and ICS. I think there's a lot more awareness starting to reach, you know, higher echelons. And of, I think that's uh, because um, there's a lot of consumer products out there for IoT. So people are buying the Nest thermostats. Uh, they're buying stuff to uh, for smart homes. But some people, you know, are getting hacked with that. You know, turning up the heat. I didn't turn up the heat. Who did? Yeah, I mean, IoT used to be very expensive. You know, you go and you buy a, a Philips Hue light bulb, and one light bulb is like $150. Absolutely right. That's not affordable. But now you go to Home Depot, and for $15, you can buy a GE Wink, you know, light bulb. That's that's fairly affordable now. $15 is not super cheap, but affordable. And yeah, all this IoT stuff, it used to be only for the early adopters, the, you know, the geeks that really enjoy tinkering with these things. But right. nowadays, it sort of reached mass market, especially, with, especially smartphones. With, yeah, <laughs> I mean, smartphones. You know, you want to be able to control every part of your life nowadays over your smartphone. Right. Everything connects to it. Everything talks to it. You know, you want to be at work and you want to know, oh, my garage door is closed, or right. what about you know the baby camera? I want to be able to wash all these things. You have certain expectations for what you should be able to do nowadays, and IoT lets you do a lot of these things. Okay, so tell me how Shodan. Uh, can help out the actual uh, viewer that we have or companies. Right, so for the individual consumer, they usually don't have a lot of technical knowledge or security knowledge. Correct. And they're going to buy a baby cam and they're going to install it and they're going to go online, they're going to ask other people, maybe on you know, fa Facebook, how do I access this camera remotely? What do I do? And they can say, oh, just open up your firewall, do any things. Your Bluetooth's on, come on, it's good, I mean, you're good. A lot of consumers, they should use Shodan where we check yourself. You know, see, are you running anything that's publicly exposed on the internet? Because Shodan does all the work for you, so you just go to Shodan, you type in your IP address, and it's very easy. And the same is true for big companies. You'd be surprised. A lot of big organizations, they know how to nail down their web servers and their database and these traditional, you know, server products. Devices, yeah. yeah, exactly, that they know, and they have system administrators that manage them. But what about your HVAC system? You know, heating, air conditioning. What about, you know, you have TVs that have uh, dashboards and other displays in your office, or your office itself. So John, you're absolutely right, and you mentioned HVAC system, and that's one of the systems that hackers use to break into uh, Target and uh, take uh, consumer information and uh, financial information. Exactly. Nowadays, most companies don't have a good grasp on the industrial control system side of things for the network. Target is a perfect example of that. They probably had very good security and fraud and you know, the corporate network, they had VPNs to connect and everything like that. But they didn't realize that their HVAC is another vector. You know, it's, it's a computer that manages the building, heating, air conditioning, and it's you connected. Can, it's connected, it's on a network. If you can hack it, you can pivot from there to the rest of the network. Mm -hmm. and you know, people always say, well, why do I need to worry about the security of my refrigerator? Why do I need to about worry about the security of my light bulb? Well, we already know that you can run malware on your refrigerator. Absolutely. In case you didn't know that, you can. Yeah. We already have instances of people sending spam from refrigerators. Not the, <laughs> you know, the, the real kind, but the mail spam. Right. So all the same things that we know, all the malware that works on your Windows desktop also works on these IoT platforms. Mm -hmm. But we don't have antivirus. And what happens if your refrigerator gets hacked? Well, what do you do? Right. I mean, you have to buy a new one, right? You need food. You need to keep it cool and frozen, right? I don't know what you're going to do. Right. If a blue screens, you can try to reboot it, but you can't reinstall it. <laughs> right. It's kind of silly. You think about these things nowadays, but that's what we're moving to. We don't have antivirus. We don't have firewalls that understand IoT or ICS. Mm -hmm. But we're slowly moving in that direction because it's becoming more mainstream. Absolutely. So uh, go to the website, shodan.io, take a look around.